Hi, I'm Trevor Dwyer Lynch. Thanks for listening to the exclusive club Dads Don't Want to Belong To podcast. Please do me a favour and subscribe to this podcast. And if you can, leave us a review. That'd be much appreciated. Grief, my constant friend. In quiet hours, you descend your cold embrace. A bittersweet reminder of my soul's defeat. The night is still, the world asleep. My thoughts and I alone, we keep each other company. Yet, I crave my son's touch, his smell, his laughter, his anger. I visit his place daily. Praise to his soul, I wish to placate. The silent echoes in my mind. No Jordan's voice, no hand to find, no physical presence of the being that was once mine. My heart aches with an emptiness that nothingness can't fill or bless. The moon and stars above, a distant light, a metaphor for my son's face, my only solace in the night. But even they can't bring me peace as I search for a sweet release. Oh grief, you haunt my days and follow me through all my ways. Yet, in your grip, I find my muse and pen my thoughts, my soul to soothe. So let me stay with you a while and share with you this silent isle. For in your grasp, I found my heart and tried to piece together the wounds of my broken heart, broken into a million pieces. The exclusive club that dads don't want to belong to came from, sadly, over 20 years, six mates of mine have all buried a child, whether it be the son or a daughter. And been on the periphery of that, you know, it's 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 hard, mate. It's weird because again we keep going back to what do people say? What do you say? And when you've got mates, you we were all joined, mate, which is mad. But obviously the love of football, we had to play football together, we had to play against each other, we went in the same boozer, you know what I mean, for the banter on on a Saturday night, you know, it was the Royal Oak in Disbury night, where that pub back in the, you know. Late 80s, early 90s was unbelievable, mate. You had grassroots footballers, kids who played football in the park. You had semi-pro lads. You had pro professionals, internationals in this booze all together having the crack. It was a right right laugh, all right, buzz. Everyone got the mickey taken out of him, whatever. You'd wait for you to come in. All right, Paul, you go on. Oh, you got hammered today. Da, da, da. Mm. You know, you'd have professional footballers in one side. Hey, you were crap. You know what I mean? Da, 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 da. But, and it was great. And that was all over football. And then suddenly, my first mate, he lost his son. And you're like, what the? So obviously, you know, you, you get around him, you, you, you're you trying to support him. But how do you support someone who's lost a son when you've not lost theirs? Because like you say, the empathy can only come from that. The real genuine empathy can only come from if you've been through that same experience. Like I said, yeah, of course, we have sympathy because we've, we've experienced grief. But how do you say to someone, I'm so, so, so sorry because... And you want to say it with sincerity and meaning and everything and knowing that you're there for them, but is it getting through? Are you getting through? And da 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 then all of a sudden, mate, like I said, over 20 years, bam, bam, bang, and all the lads who were in that boozer who we played football with or against have lost either a son or a daughter. You know, some, you know, a couple in tragic, tragic circumstances, mate, which, you know, I won't mm. discuss that because that's, you know, if we have, if I have the honour of speaking to one here, whatever, that, that might be the case, but we don't really want to go into specifics out there. The children died. The idea, oh, was absolutely, mate, yeah. the idea was for him to talk about how they deal with that grief, how they deal with that loss. So then obviously then, you know, throughout the years, that's been happening. And then 
the, the, the last one was literally six weeks before Jordan died. And I'm at my mate's house with a, with a few friends supporting him and obviously we're, we're, we're gutted and we're upset and he and his missus and his daughter are stricken. And we're all saying, geez, geez, man, what the hell? Imagine that. And then six weeks later, I've joined that exclusive clubs that dads don't want to belong to. Because, yeah, you can talk about dads want to belong to a golf club or a football supporters club. Da, da. This is one group that we do not want to belong to, mate. And that was, this is a membership that was given to us. We don't even have to apply for this membership. Do you know what I mean? For want of a better word. So, you know, the exclusive clubs that don't, that dads don't want to belong to, I'm now a member of that, as are, I suppose, hundreds of others that we don't want to belong to. And I just thought, how can I put it all into something that makes sense about how we are? And that that's what just come up with it. And, you know, one of me, again, another really, really good friend of, uh, of mine, Duncan, you know, he, he, he said to me, he said, I'm at your son's funeral. And I'm stood with five other lads who'd lost their, their kids, who were there supporting you. And I was next to them thinking about supporting you and also supporting them. But I'm on the periphery. I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Mm. And that was how we are. And he said, it was mad that, and that was me, you know, you know, good God. I don't wish it on anyone to... I don't want anybody who I know now to become mm. a member of that club. You know, you can go to uni, you can go to school and you go, hey, do you remember Billy Jones within bloody in the fifth year? Oh, he's lost his son, you know. Oh, I've not seen him for like 30 years. How well, tragic. Do you remember someone who was at uni with? Da, 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 da. You know, she lost... And you go, oh. But to be in close proximity... Yeah. I just find that, I don't know, it's unique, in a, for want of a better word, unique that this happens, but it's not a unique, nice unique. No, I think it opens it up, mate. When I when I think about it, um, there are two or three mates, not as close as, mm. as they were who've lost, who've lost children. Yeah. Um, and then when you you do start looking around and you're doing a bit of research about it as you do, even for me, just trying to think what I can do to mm. to help you. And and you realise that there are communities all over the place of these mm. groups of people who've got this who've got this shared experience. And it and it's listen when 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 you said to me, listen, I've got this idea for a podcast. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, my, my initial concern was, I, 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 Trev, I don't know if it's a good thing <laughs> for you. I know, because uh, you've not got a poker face, mate. You, you know what I mean? You, <laughs> no, you, I'm... Face I, <laughs> well, I have, but not for people that I love, mate. And, no, you know, I know and, what you're saying. And, and, and it was like, yeah, are, are, you, are you sure? But when you talk about it and, and bringing that, talking about the things you, you've talked about today, which is, you know, I'm honoured, mate, that you've you've said the things that you've you've opened up today, like you have. But it will, and every you know everything I try I, I try and do. You you want it you want it to try and help somebody, mm. and you know, and I I, it's, I I think it it absolutely will, and you know where it where, where it goes is is completely up to you. But you'll always have, you know, you'll always have my support, and and generally from putting the trailer out. A few weeks ago, the feedback, and, and I'll ask, I'll ask you as well. But I mean, the feedback that's come back to me from people who said, "You know what? I know what what it was about, but I really didn't want to listen mm. to that trailer. But when yeah. I did, um, I'm glad I did. And you know what I mean by that? I'm glad yeah, that that I did. And, and it's been really, really overwhelmingly positive. Well, it's, when I say overwhelming, there's been no negative. Yeah. comments at all i mean what what's the feedback been to you from first and foremost from from your mates who are you know your, your, your five mates that have gone through 
the same experience. What's the feedback been from them? Yeah, it's been great. Again, I mean, you know, it's one of those with, with the with the lads. Obviously, initially the idea was we start this group and all six of us sit around the table and we talk about how we cope with our loss and our grief. That was me in me. I suppose not blind type thing, but it's just this idea. What is what is to bring them all together? Or what is to say? Listen, you know, we we all support each other. We're all, you know, we're all get this in a safe environment. You know, if you want to cry, if you want to laugh. Listen, mate, you know, you, you do like, you, you feel guilty laughing. Mm. Like, shit, what am I doing laughing with my son? You know what I mean? Can't laugh on my daughter, can't laugh in. You know, you just think, then if, then it's for you, sometimes you feel guilty crying because you, 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 you're you crying in front of people. It's like, oh, shit, shouldn't we really be doing that? And I just wanted him to say, look, let's all just still sit and talk about their experiences because, like I say, I won't name the last, but, you know, like I said, one or two of them, one of them in particular, um, I'll give a bit of a hint, he's a really, really good goalkeeper, but he'll, he'll know who he, he'll know, the lads will know. But, you know, you sit down and you talk to him and and I asked him, what, what am I to expect out of this, man? What? And he talked about stuff and, like I say, certain facets of the grieving process and that are coming to the fore with me, you know what I mean? And mm. it's helped me because I'm, I'm understanding the way I'm reacting in a certain way is because of this facet of grieving, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like saying, of the six lads, there's only really two that are able to, you know, sit and chat about stuff. They, they've all said, yeah. I mean, we started a WhatsApp group, but it's only me who put stuff on it. And I want it to be a WhatsApp group where, you know, in a lot of groups you, you get in that, you, think, you feel obliged that you've got to yeah. say something. You know what I mean? But with this, I've 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 emphasised, no, you don't have to. If you want to write something, it's just there. It's just there. We don't mm -hmm. go on it every week, we don't even go on it every month. I just I've just written stuff like the podcast. And, but I've had phone calls off him. You no, know, I met, met went to meet one the other week. Great idea. Have they listened to the trailer? Yeah. Men need it. Men need it. I need it. That's what he was saying. Mm. But it's one of them, I'm saying, this isn't a pressure thing. You know, I want dads out there who don't talk, dads out there who want to say how they or don't deal with the grief of losing a child can come and speak on here. You know what I mean? Like I say, we're not going to specifics of how your, your child died. I want to know about how you feel, how people make you feel. You know, because like I say, you know, with my poems, I've written some stuff, mate, and it's raw. I'm, you know, I tell mm -hmm. it raw. It's how, how I feel, how people have made me feel going through this process, how I would deal with it, you know. But the, the feedback has been unbelievable. I, I was like gobsmacked. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think not if you put up, we had like 56 downloads in the first hour of the channel. I'm like, what? And then oh. it goes like, you know, it's on this stuff. And I'm like, flipping heck. And it's just a case of, like you say, you just want, like you, man, you know, when I sat back and thought about it, I thought, oh, I don't really want it to be dour, if you know what I mean. I don't yeah. want it to be yeah. energy sapping. Mm. And people come off there who might be in the space and, and it takes them further into that darkness. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to be like that, but I want them to talk about the darkness. Mm. But I want them to come out of it and go, you know what? I didn't like you said, I didn't really want to listen to that. But listen to it, yeah, it's 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 uh it's it's okay. You know, it's okay. And obviously, you know, I don't really look in the future, I don't live in the past, mm. I live in the now, I don't look in the future, but I think going forward, sure, it'd be great to sort of like have a space where everybody can who's done this as a drop in. Mm. You know, we say we say, right, we're having a drop in. A, at a particular venue on this particular time, whoever wants to come, come. If we get two people coming, great. If we get two hundred, great. But for people to go meet each other and go, yeah, I experienced that. I experienced this feeling of grief at this particular time. I don't do this, or I do this. Do you know what I mean? And I just think, like you say, it's that thing about men not talking. Mm. 
being educated, forced, in for want of a better word, not to talk about grief, not to express the grief. You know what I mean? And listen, mate, I'm just a I'm just a, a normal bloke grieving dad. Like there's hundreds out there, I'm sure there is. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know what it is about this, mate. I don't know what. I like to think it's my, it's my son driving me to do it because. Yeah, I have been in a dark place, mate. I've been in a dark place and I've considered, you know what, you do consider it because you think, what's the point? But then I've got to look at, I've got a daughter, I've got two grandkids and it's like, that's not fair on them to, to administer more trauma, more pain, more grief, you know what I mean? So, I just want people to listen. If you want to get involved, get involved. And just hopefully something comes out of it where, again, we can go or we'd go, listen, yeah, I'm going to go there this week or, you know, tell me how they do. Like I say, I've started to, you know, the sound baths have been fantastic, you know, for meditation, the, the, the sounds, you know, I do chant, I try and get out and do a bit of walking. You know, sometimes I walk from, I live in Stockport and, my son's place, I call it his place, is in Cheadle, and I walk three or four miles along the, along the Mersey, just there sometimes, you know what I mean? And sometimes I get there, I'm a wreck, sometimes I get there, I'm all right, and I walk back again, and that's, you know. Mm. I just want to so how people do, do, and, and, you know, the research that I've done, you know, I speak to my mate, and she lost her son 30 years ago, and she even says to me, now, the people that she talks to, you come across, you know, whether it be through work scenario or, or leisure, who have lost it, a child, it's always the mums that talk. Mums mm -hmm. gravitate, you know, and she said, even the partners of them mums, they don't, the men don't, who she knows, they don't talk about it. So what, 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 what do we do then? We just keep it within you, but keeping it within you, what does that cause within you? You know, because it's toxic at the end of the day. It is, mate, yeah. You know, and I'm a great believer, you you, you all them things, not only when it's great, but anything toxic, and it has to manifest, and sometimes it can come out into the extreme, you know. And I just think, like I said, I don't know what's pushing me, mate. Honestly, I just really, really don't. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, what, and I didn't think this would be an easy question to ask, but I'm going to ask it. Do you do you think Jordan would be proud of you trying to help other dads? Yeah. I'd like to think so, mate. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to think so. You know, uh, I think when things like this happen, like I say, especially when it's your son or your child, things that have gone on beforehand are totally irrelevant, mate. You know, the past is the past. Fuck that. I'm not asked if I argued with you or if I fell out with you or, you know, it was family issues or whatever. No other pain, no other thing that anybody's happened to me in my life can hurt me like this. You know, God forbid anything happens to me, be, you know, my daughter, my grandkids or whatever, you know what I mean? But there's no other pain, mate. So, you know, for example, I've got, I've got some of his mates, right, who, who, don't speak to me because Jordan didn't speak to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like they feel a bit of guilt, I suppose, in their way. I get it. Mm. I get it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm thinking, well, one of the most comforting things that, you know, quite a few of his mates have said to me, listen, Trev, I know it's not easy and it, but it might give you a bit of comfort, but he was going to ring you. You know, he was going to ring you. Now, that might have been the week after, might have been the month after, whatever. But it's just like, and that gives me a bit of comfort. Mm. But then sometimes I think I think to myself, his other mates go, who are you to, de to decide that you shouldn't do this because Jordan wouldn't have liked it because Jordan's not here. You don't know what Jordan was going to do later on. You know, stuff in, family stuff, and you go, mm. hold on, mate. Just because you say this doesn't mean... Because we don't know what we're doing day to day. You know, we've all fell out with people, and the next thing they're like, oh, you know what? And you ring him or... You see him in the street and it's like, 
you know, I've written I've written another poem. It's about you know, I wish I could row with my son again. Mm. You know what I mean, and type of thing. And you can row with him, and then you know, the next day you meet up at the shops and you're hugging, and, and it's all over. You know what I mean? And it's just one of those. And so, within within my within my within my pain, mate. I have this thing now. That crap that we had before has gone. Mm. You know, it's gone. And you know, again, it, in 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 his in his religion, you know, what I mean, in talking to people who, 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 who were into it, mate. Jordan's real Muslim friends talk to me about stuff, and he goes like, "Wow," and he said, Trev, "Yeah, so you had a fallout." You know what I mean? Dads do. Mm. You might have done some shit things. You know what I mean? Dads do. But what now? For what? Why Why is that being carried forward now? Because no other pain can hurt me. There's nothing greater that can hurt me than the loss of, you know, missing my son and not, you know. Yeah, we didn't speak, but I knew he was there. Mm. You know what I mean? I knew he was there. Like, in, you know, like I say, every now and again, I might bump into him in the street and he might be, oh, all right, Doc, you know. Listen, I don't speak, to, you know, it's weird. It, and it's sometimes it's a bit hard because it's like history repeating itself because I don't re speak to my biological father. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's different. I mean, you know, him and my son spoke when I was four, you know what I mean? And blah, blah, blah. But I'm different from him. And I know that I am. Yeah, I have some of his traits and I've had some of his traits in the past, don't get me wrong. But I'm different when it comes to the kids mm. about connections and stuff. You know, I make the effort. So, you know, I like to think wherever he is, he goes, yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Despite what, you're all right. <laughs> oh, mate, well, yeah. What What would you like to say to, to other dads out there who've, who've lost a child? I just want to say to them, like, uh, like myself, I do. <clears throat> Truly understand the pain that you, you're enduring, mate, and and I just want to say, like, you know, I want you to listen to the podcast. I want you to, if you want to get involved, get involved. If you don't, I mean, when I say getting involved, just by listening is getting involved. And there might be something there that triggers something that says, you know, when I can do that. You know, if they want to DM me personally, you know what I mean? You'll find, I'm, I'm on the Twitter as the Lynch, the Lynch one. You can DM me there or whatever, you know, um, if you want to talk that way, if you want, if you want to come on and, and speak, yeah. But I also want you to try and look at yourself and go, how do you manage it? How do you cope with your grief? And is it being detrimental to yourself? Because we have to, and it seems quite selfish, but you have to have that self-preservation. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, people say to you, oh, you've got to do this, stop. You've got to start doing things for you because you'd get dragged into that rabbit hole, mate. And like I said to you, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying it won't happen again, where they go into these dark places and they, you know, but I think I've probably been lucky that my mind, even at its weakest point, has been strong. And also people around me have made me change the decision that sometimes I think I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, you know, I, 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 I get that dads think like that. But I think if we can try and talk, we might not have, or we might have a percentage that, a more percent that don't go on the other side. You know, my cousin, he lost his daughter and endured that pain for like 40 months, mate, and then decided to go with her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, wow. And I don't want to get into the realms of suicide because that's a different thing altogether. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. there's groups for that, which is fantastic, what they're doing, them three blokes who were doing whatever, plastic kids. Yeah, amazing stuff, yeah. I think it's brilliant what they're doing. But, you know, again, you go, this is how you feel. I've felt that. You know what I mean? But it's like, say, it's my daughter that dropped me back and the kids that have drawn me back. And that's what I say to dads. 
you can do something better, I think, beneficial to you and to them around you by not going down that road and like I say, mate, listen, I've not got the I've not got the the magic answer for this shit. You know, this this pain will always be with me. Every day it's with me, mate. And you know what I mean? But it's just like, you know, that thing all times a great healer. Stop fucking saying that. It's not. I think what you do is someone sent me a thing the other day and it's like, uh, let me just get it off of my phone here, mate. Sorry. And it's it's really good. And it's a it was a it was a picture. And it says, here it is. It says, uh, people tend to believe that grief shrinks over time. What really happens is that we grow around our grief. Okay. And what you've got is you've got three jars, right? And in the first jar is a massive big ball. And then the second one is a smaller ball. And then in the, the third one, it's minute. And mm. that's when it says people tend to believe that grief shrinks over time. And those balls depict the grief. And then on the second sentence, what really happens is that we go around our grief and you've got the three balls that are the same. Don't, you probably can't see that, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's really poignant that, and I think, yeah, we we have it every day. Do you know what I mean? We have it every day. And I then, like you said, the, the thing about this is because you've lost a child, you know, we've lost a child and I think that's what rips you up, man. And Because like you say, it's not, you know, in the in the East, you know, you talk about Buddhism, you talk about Hinduism, you talk about Sikhism or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And they talk about death as a part of every day. Mm. You know what I mean? And it can come to you at any stage, whether you're a week old or you're hundred, you know, and they talk about it. We don't in the Western world. No, we're chronologi chronologically taught that it's going to go great grandparents, grandparents, mm -hmm. parents, us, our children, and so forth and so on. So when that's gone, boof, boof, mishmashed, what? Why? How have I lost my son? You know, people who lose their son and daughters when they're babies. You know what's really. What was really hard for me in the first couple of weeks, my sister had had a, uh, I think she had two miscarriages and a few stillbirths. She went through this period, man. It was just really, really sad and tired for her. And when it first happened with Jordan, she said to me, um, it's all right, I kid, don't worry. You know, I, I know I know you feel, I understand and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't really getting it. At first, yeah. I'm going, what, what, what are you talking about? You know, when I lost so and so, and and we had him going, but he was a day old. Do you know what I mean? Or was a few hours old? And in the mismatch of all the thing that was going on in the end, I just couldn't understand it. I'm going, hold on a minute. Yeah. But then suddenly it, it came on, the yeah. light bulb. And for me, death's about, in terms of, with it either one end of the spectrum or the other, it's still traumatic. It's still bad. People go, oh, well, the other good innings, he was 86. Mm. No. Do you know what I mean? You want to be there forever in your head. Yeah, yeah. And so when our kid goes, yeah, yeah, that was me. I, you know, I, I I, still get upset and da 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 and I know you feel losing a child and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? How do you know? No, you don't. Well, yeah, man, we haven't lost a child. But then it come in, yes, she has. She's lost a child who was still still stillbirth, you know what I mean? Like and one a few months later and one a couple of years later, I'm thinking, shit, because her grief is I wonder what he or she would be like now. Yeah. I wonder what school he would have went to. I wonder what, you know, exams he would have got. I wonder what job she would have got. I wonder what do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in my grieving ignorance for want of a better word i wasn't no d d d yeah yeah no i get that mate and now i just go jesus i oh, kid yeah and there's some ways that must be even more bloody painful it's like going back to the lads you know in the group the most exclusive club that does don't want blonde to there's there's lads in there mate who's 
kids have died tragically, mate. But yet, still within their heart, have the time to pick up the phone and talk to me. I, I see one every week. You know, we'll meet for coffee, we'll go for a bit of brekkie. And you go, it took me a few weeks to suddenly go, fucking hell, hold on a minute. Because in my head, sure, it, it's so tragic about my son. Mm. But the way their children have died is 10 times worse. But they're supporting me in my grief. And it's like they're putting theirs aside. Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, you... I, think, I thought to myself, you selfish bastard. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because you're not, you're not thinking about anything, Paul. You're not thinking about their scenario. What yeah, that, that, that's... Yeah, well, I, I completely get that, mate. I, I completely get that. And... You know, listen, there's, there's just a lot of decent human beings out there, isn't there? That, yeah, that, there is, mate, there is. That... Thanks for listening to the exclusive club Daz Don't Want to Belong To podcast. Please do me a favour and subscribe to this podcast. And if you can, leave us a review. That'd be much appreciated. See you next time.